Oh, hello. Hi, sorry. I didn't hear you come in. Yes. Ah, welcome. All our friends are back. Sean. I... Yes, yes. Addie, Amy, Gracie, Sophie, Jane, yes. Naya, Eve, Ali, yes. Mrs. Holmes, Mrs. Taylor, yes. Welcome back. Welcome. Welcome back to the Philly Art Institute. Yes. Good to have you all here. Of course, you know my friend uh, Sean the Sheep, yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Are a few of you new here? Well, great, great to have you here. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Riley McCoy, and I am. I'm sorry. Oh, they don't. You don't believe that I'm actually Riley McCoy? You're Mr. All right. Yes, yes. That was a joke. A joke. I am actually uh, not Riley McCoy. I am Mr. Nick, but I am an artist here at the Philly Art Institute. And actually today, uh, I'm doing a little bit of sketching. And, uh, yes, we are celebrating the joy of Easter here. Taking a little time off to do a variety of sketches. Would you like to see some of my sketches? Yes, yes. Yeah, let, let me show you. This sketch I call Pastor at Bay. This one I call Children's Director at Bay. And of course, George Washington. Not exactly at Bay. Actually, the Sean here is painting of George Washington. The father of our country. Yes. You almost know? Yes, I would love to see it. Yes, yes, yes. Let's see. Now, Sean, now, obviously, uh, you can uh, paint whatever you'd like, you know, use your creativity, but. It doesn't seem to be George Washington. Of course it's not George Washington. It's a sheep. George Washington was not a sheep. No! No, 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 George Washington was a human. What do you mean, how do I know? Everyone knows that George Washington was a human. Look. See? That's a picture of George Washington. What do you mean, how do I know that's what George Washington looked like? Everyone knows that George Washington looked like that. How do we know? Well, well, I mean, Sean, we know George Washington looks like that because we have paintings of him. He appears in our on our money. Look, look, see? See, look. Dollar bill. And, and that's a quarter. That's George Washington. As you can see, there's very little wool upon him. Yes, he lived 220 years ago. But I think if anyone had written down George Washington was a sheep, we remember it. Yes, we you know he was a soldier in the wars. Uh, you know, he became general of the Continental Army. Uh, he won the uh, Revolutionary War, and uh, he became the first president of the United States of America. Won re-election and re retired to Mount Vernon. I myself have been to Mount Vernon, where uh, George Washington lived. At no point did I see a sheep dip. Look. It's not like in the middle of the Battle of Valley Forge, everyone took a time out so George Washington could go munch on grass in a field. It just didn't happen. Sean, I am fairly certain that if Jefferson, Hamilton, and Madison had to go out and shear the father of our country, that somebody would have written that down by now. It's when we know George Washington was not a sheep, that he was a human being. How do we know George Washington ever lived? Well, about 
120 years ago, there were people who knew George Washington. They knew him, and they knew what he did and what he said, and they, they wrote it all down. Yes, yes, we have lots of testimony from people who said, I knew George Washington, this is who he was, this is what he said, this is what he did. Mm, yes. The same is true for any historical person, whether it's uh, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Susan B. Anthony, Harriet Tubman, Queen Elizabeth I, Julius Caesar. Yes, yes, people who know them write down their experiences, they write down what they know and what they, what they saw, what they witnessed, and they compile histories. That's how we know about anything. People write it down, we read, and we come to conclusions about who they are and what they've done. Actually, that reminds me of a story. If you were with us last week, you know that we're answering the question, who saved us from our sin? The answer, of course, is only Jesus saves us from sin. In fact, we've been following the story about how God has saved humanity from sin, evil, and death through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Actually, in the past few weeks, we've been talking about how God brought Jesus back to life and how he's been appearing to people. Well, this week, we're going to talk about how he appeared to his 12 disciples. A really good story for you today? Check us out. On the first day of the week, in the evening, the disciples gathered together in a house. They locked the doors because they were afraid of the Jews. They didn't want to be killed like Jesus had been killed. But wait. Jesus had appeared to two disciples on the road, and Mary Magdalene had reported seeing him alive too. Could it be true? As the disciples talked, Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace to you. The disciples were afraid. Was this really Jesus? The disciples thought they were seeing a ghost. Why are you afraid? Why do you doubt? Jesus said. Look at me and touch me. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, but I do. I'm not a ghost. Jesus showed his disciples the nail holes in his hands and the hole in his side. Jesus was alive? It seemed too good to be true. The disciples rejoiced because they were so happy to see Jesus. The disciples gave Jesus some fish to eat. Jesus talked to them and explained the Bible to them. The Bible is about me, Jesus said. Then, Jesus told them that they had a job to do. Jesus had died and was raised from the dead so that people could be forgiven for their sins. The disciples needed to tell other people to repent from their sin and be forgiven. Peace to you, Jesus said to them again. God sent me to earth, and in the same way, I am sending you. Then Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent out the disciples to be his witnesses and to tell all the people that he is alive. <gasps> One of the disciples, Thomas, was not there when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen Jesus, but Thomas doubted. He said, I don't believe you. I want to see and touch the holes in his hands and his side, or I will never believe. Eight days passed, and the disciples were indoors again. This time, Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus came in and stood among them. He said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Touch the marks on my hands and my side. Don't be an unbeliever. Believe. Thomas believed. My Lord and my God, he said. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Those who believe in me without seeing me are blessed. Jesus continued to appear to the disciples, proving he was alive and he taught them about the kingdom of God. For 40 days, Jesus presented himself to at least 500 people and proved that he is alive. Jesus is still alive today. Jesus appeared to his disciples. 
Often people will say that it's much harder for us today to believe that someone comes back from the dead than it was 2,000 years ago to believe that. No, I mean, people 2,000 years ago, they knew people didn't come back from the dead. Everything around them told them that the dead don't come back to life. Jesus appeared to Peter. He appeared to the rest of the 12 disciples. He appeared to his own brother James. He appeared to all the apostles, 500 other people. And even Paul himself wrote down that he saw Jesus in the flesh. These people who knew Jesus, they wrote down their experiences 2,000 years ago today. And so we know about Jesus and his resurrection the same way we know about George Washington, Julius Caesar, or any other historical figure. People who knew them and witnessed what they had done wrote things down. We can trust these eyewitnesses that have told their story about Jesus. So we can believe the uh, stories of Jesus' life, teachings, and resurrection are true. We can believe it even if we don't see it with our own eyes. But here's the thing. If we put our faith in God, we put our faith in Jesus, follow his teachings, one day we will see Jesus in the flesh with our own eyes. That will happen. You just have to have faith in God, follow his son Jesus, and believe God raised him from the dead. Oh, oh, there's the whistle. Looks like we're almost out of time. So we always like to pray beforehand. So please, bow your head and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you did bring your son Jesus back to life, uh, defeating sin, evil, and death. And that uh, many, many people uh, saw him uh, resurrected, brought back to life. And we're able to write down uh, their experiences of his life death, resurrection, and teachings, and just help us to have faith in Him and have faith in you, and give us that uh, security that we need to uh, do your work in this world. Continue to protect us and our families and uh, through the trials and tribulations that we may have. Keep our faith strong, and uh, just continue to be with us. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, uh, that's all the time we have for this week. Come back again next week. Sean's working on his uh, latest uh, painting. Uh, is it your last time? Good. Well, let's see what you've made. Oh, very good. I think you have something there. I may not know much about art, but I know what I like.